Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. Are you thinking about upgrading from the FSC spring to a VKS spring? Do you wanna know the specs on the VKS spring so that you can buy your own? Uh, these are sort of a lifetime purchase. I, I don't really think that these are gonna wear out on you. So, but you can also get these, um, you know, aftermarket. You can, you, can, you can take the specs that I'm gonna give you today and you can buy it yourself. And um, so let me uh, take you through a few measurements and uh, let's see what the differences are between these two springs. Okay, let's do a couple of measurements. This is a um, FSC spring here. And take a look at it. You can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven coils. And let's take a look and see what is the inner diameter. Inner diameter. Eighteen point zero one, very close to eighteen millimeter. Another one, eighteen point one three. Do one from this end, eighteen point two five. So it's very close to eighteen millimeter. And then the the diameter of the wire itself is 1.7 millimeter, 1.7 millimeter. Okay, now in comparison, let's try a VKS spring and let's see what, how, how it differs. The VKS spring you can see has less coils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight maybe another half coil, eight to nine coils. It's definitely a stronger spring. So let's check the inner diameter here. 17.8, so that's very similar. Let's do it from this end. 17.7, 17.8. Now let's check the diameter of the coil. 1.93, so it's very close to two. Try one more, 1.97. I think it's very close to two millimeter, 1.9, 1.92. Now we go back one more time to the FSC spring, 1.7. 1.7. So. So it looks like about a a 0.2 millimeter difference between these two is not a, it's not a great difference. Um, the biggest difference is the length, and uh, the compressed length is also going to be different. Um, this one I can compress. Uh, it's very difficult, but I can compress it. Um, but it's very hard to get an accurate measurement. This one is even even more difficult to compress all the way to get an accurate compressed length. Um, but I do believe that this one has a has a smaller compressed length when it's fully compressed uh, and a smaller distance. So that's also a parameter. But you can see that there's not a big difference in the actual wire itself. Uh, we're talking a 0.2 millimeter. Biggest difference is the number of coils and, and the material. So if you can get something that's similar numbers of coils and has a similar uh, distance. So let's look at the actual distance here. This one is um, 
about 81 millimeters long, whereas this one is about 92 millimeters long, 93. So 82, 93, so that's a significant difference in the length as well. And when you plug these into a calculator and determine the numbers of newtons of force that they can sustain, this one's a little better. So let me summarize what we saw there. Both of these, uh, as you would expect, because they're both designed for the same barrel uh, and the same, you know, a chamber, they're, they're, they're basically the same width here. And, and they're, they're uh, you know, for a uh, same design system. And the distance here is about 18 millimeters and pretty much the same for both of these two springs. So the, the inner diameter is, is not the issue. Uh, you just, that would be the same as for an FSC spring. But as you can see, the one on the left here, the VKS spring is shorter. And according to my measurements with a, with a caliper, is somewhere around 0.2 millimeters, maybe 0.25 up to 0.3 millimeters thicker than the FSC spring, which is longer, has more coils. And so that gives this a little bit more power because it's got less coils and a little bit thicker spring and everything else being the same. And, and of course, the compressed distance is gonna be different uh, but that is a, is a byproduct of the number of coils as well as the um, width here. So bottom line, if you want a VKS spring and that's the type of specs that you're looking for, this is the type that you would look for. Uh, I don't think anything any stronger than this is necessary, and I've, I've designed some before that are really no better. Um, but there is an improvement in terms of resetting your bolt and... and um, I think there's an, there is an advantage to air efficiency by using this type of spring, which is an improvement over the stock spring, uh, something that you can consider if you want to get a little more out of your launcher. And you also want to protect your bolt. Uh, having this stronger spring, I think, is a, is a help. Um, but at the same time, it's, it, it may protect your your bolt from colliding with your barrel, but at the same time, it's gonna push the bolt back with greater force each time. And now whether that force being stronger is actually worse for your firing pin and causing it to come loose over time than the, the, the chance of it actually misaligning and colliding with the bolt, which certainly with this one, it can, it can happen. It can, it's much more wobbly, whereas this one is much tighter. So there's two different issues there. Uh, one is the compression here and the fact that this is more, more likely to buckle a little bit and cause a collision, which I talked about in an earlier video. But then you got to consider this one will, will, will do a better job at that, but it'll also throw your bolt back faster. And that back and forth, back and forth of that bolt is rough on the bolt and the firing pin. So that's just something to keep in mind with this. I'm still running this one because I feel that this does not exceed the bolt's capacity. My bolt has been um, Loctited recently and it's been holding fine and my VKS uh, is, has not had any problems at all to date uh, because it was Loctited correctly from the factory. All right, uh, folks, let's wrap up this video. I want to show you a few controls here at the end. This is the Grimberg barrel first. We're going to test it with the caliper and I, I pretty much knew what I was expecting and I got very much what I expected. Um, it's about 0 0.685686, somewhere in between. That's about exactly what I was expecting. And the Grimberg Jewel comes in at 0 0.684. That's about exactly what I was expecting as well. So those are nice controls. I put them here at the end. Uh, I think uh, that's a great bore match. That's something that you should strive for when you're bore matching your rounds. Um, everybody take care. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.